Now here's one of the questions I get asked often by people that have actually been playing sporadically all of their lives. You'll hear this commonly at the start of a poker game. Isn't poker all, all about luck? There is a short range luck factor, but it doesn't last. Poker is a game of skill and not chance. When I started playing professionally, imagine me at 19, a little bit cocky, a little full of himself. I know that seems a little bit of a stretch right now. <laughs> But I never once called myself a professional gambler. I always called myself a professional poker player. Gambling is defined as the risking of money on an unforeseen outcome, AKA a game of chance. Poker is a game of skill. In the long run, the best players will always win. So that's the one thing that really differentiates it from any other form of quote unquote gambling. It's the only game you can beat. Now let's get down to how it is that the house is involved in a game that isn't a house game. It's a game where they make money, but it isn't something where you're playing against them. This is what differentiates it from the other games. This is what gives you, the player, the opportunity to be a winning player, whereas there is no other game you can say that about. You walk into the casino and you see a blackjack table. The second you sit down in that game, you're a 52 to 48 underdog to play against the house straight up. Same goes virtually for the game of craps. There is no more graphic example of house advantage than the game roulette. Everyone seen a roulette wheel? 36 numbers, a zero, and a double zero. Once again, the brilliant mathematician that I am not can tell you, the actual mathematical odds of picking one of those numbers out is 37 to one. When you do, the casino pays you 35 to one. That's not a monstrous edge, but it is enough to build a Bellagio. All the rest of the sports propositions, 11 to 10 on a 50-50 proposition, the racetrack, just get the gun, spin the cylinder, and point it to your head, 20% off the top, have a nice day. When I was first playing back in those card rooms, I mentioned one of the things that was more popular than even poker is everybody there was a horse player. And there were two things I learned about the racetrack. The first one was you can always tell a horse player they're the ones with the holes in their shoes. And the other thing I would always hear is the horse player's prayer. God, please let me get even. I could sure use the money. So this game here, poker, it is worth learning. It is the one game where the house does make money off of the game, but it's not prohibitive to you beating the other players. It will not stop you from having a winning average. Your competition is the field of players, not the house. Now, how do they do it? Let's discuss this. It's called the drop, the percentage, the vig, the rake, but it's no secret what they do, and it all is done right in front of the folks that are playing in the game, so there's no questions as to what exactly is happening. Every time a hand gets dealt, there are a number of ways to do this. A lot of times you'll make the person with the button put up a certain amount of chips that goes to the house. Usually in most games, the house will let those chips count as a bet for you. Regardless of that policy, they will take that amount of chips, place them right here in front of everyone's view where everyone can see it, and at the end of the hand, there's a slot that they drop them down, which goes into a metal box that sits under the table, and about every eight hours, two guys that look like a refrigerator with a head come by with a big giant cage full of other metal boxes, and they yank out the one full of chips, insert an empty one, and on the party goes around the clock 24-7, 365, 366 on leap year. And that's how the house makes their money. So they have a large vested interest in keeping the games going and keeping the pace up, which is another reason they have a dealer if you've played in your kitchen probably have noticed that hand lasts sometimes five, seven, ten minutes depending upon what football game is on or what uh, bathing suit show is on television depending upon the guys playing that night and the game will stop, the conversation will stop. That does not happen in a casino. The pace is kept up at some kind of a policy that you probably won't be too comfortable with when you first go into a casino. It seems like it's all moving so fast. But just like anything else, once you get into the flow and you understand what's going on, you'll be in a comfort zone. 
Okay, so that's the money that goes down the slot, and at the end of that hand, we move the button to her, and it's her turn, and so on all the way around so everyone contributes, and that's what keeps the game going. That's one way of doing it, where they place it before the pot is played. Another way of doing it is as the pot gets played and chips start to accumulate it, they will then take it randomly out of the pot. That's a rake-off. They'll place it over here at the same fixed amount, drop it down. That's way number two. The third way is one that used to be the only practice in California that still does exist in some high limit games, and that's what they call a time collection, which is every half hour the game literally will stop, and everyone who wants to play, say we're playing a game that has a $6 time collection, everyone who wants to continue will post $6. If you want to leave, that's when you get up and go. Someone else replaces you, but those $6 are all collected, drop down the slot, and then you play for another half hour with nothing being taken from the pot. Now, the players like the policy of the time collection as far as financially so, but what they don't like is the fact you can see every half hour the game stops. And when you start playing this game, you really have an urge to keep going. So, most places use a rake off or a drop. Thank you for watching. I'm Roger Rod, and I'm your poker expert for Professorate.com.